Hi, my name is Emma Mulqueeny and I'm the founder of Young Rewired State. So Young Rewired State started five years ago. I was working in cabinet office and we were running hack days about open data and I discovered that there were no young people coming along to any of these things. So I decided to run a young people specific event on open government data. So it took three months to find 50 kids uh, who had taught themselves how to code and would be able to work with open government data. But eventually we, we did find them and brought them all to Google for an amazing weekend. Since then it's grown from those 50 to 1,000 kids this year taking part in 60 centres across the whole of the UK for a week. And we don't just do open government data now, we do all open data because it's all very interesting for them to work with this. So we have the kids coming into the centres from Monday to Friday and they're coding with each other and with mentors that are helping them. And then at the end of the week on Friday, they all descend on Birmingham and um, they stay for a weekend of show and tell. So for the last few years, I've been running Young Rewind State in this format of having all of these kids coming into different centres and then coming together in a place last year and this year in Birmingham. And every year I was getting emails from people around the world saying, please can you bring this here or please can we join in? And up until now it's been completely impossible to actually think about how that would happen. It's difficult enough with 60 centres across the UK. However, this year we have started to go out and start with the original weekend with 50 coding kids working with open government data um, in New York. We ran New York a couple of weeks ago now and um, and in a couple of weeks we're going to be doing Berlin and then Johannesburg and we're going to spend the rest of this year just perfecting running that weekend in places around the world. So it's very exciting and the idea is that over the next five years those 50 kids will grow to the thousands that we have over here and we end up with an independent worldwide network of coding kids all used to working with open data and peer-to-peer -peer learning. So it's a kind of global but also hyper-local because of the data. We're also going to be looking at what we can do from one festival of code to the next and, and that's what we're calling hyper-local but what we mean by that is that we're going to run a series of events this autumn in Shoreditch where YRSs and kids that can code in Shoreditch can come together to a series of different events. So some hack weekends, just some drop-in centres, so what it means is that some of the kids that are in Shoreditch and other kids that are in London, and quite frankly any of the other children that are in the YRS network, are able to come to our centre in Shoreditch for either drop-in sessions or weekend hacking or just mentoring. And throughout the autumn term of this year, we're going to be working out what works, what doesn't work, and then rolling that out across the other 60 centres that we have here in the UK, just so that we can keep that peer-to-peer -peer learning going, which is so important to us and so important to the community. I think it's very important for kids to learn to code at the moment because we've become consumers so much. So understanding how to play a computer game and how to operate a computer is not the same as understanding how the digital world works and it's almost a digital citizenship and this is the language that needs to be spoken and so I firmly believe that children need to at least understand the basics of programming, computational thinking, just simply that would be a good start. But as soon as they start down that road, you find that they want to learn more. And so they will go away from the festival this weekend with all sorts of ideas buzzing around in their heads and they want to build those things over the next year and then come back. And so they want to teach themselves. So just understanding computational thinking does actually light that fire, which is such good fun. So I think it's important from that point of view. I also think it's absolutely critical that this generation grow up understanding open data because it's something that people have fought for for a long time it's a new economy it's a it's a new way of businesses operating and these young people are going to be in jobs that are working with open data for corporates who have open data and they're going to be the first generation really of open source, open data, open education, young people and so I think you can't start that early enough.
Every time we run a festival, I always get some feedback from the children afterwards, as you really should do, it's very good practice. So we go out to the children and um, we ask them what went well, what didn't go so well, and what they really value about uh, what they've experienced during the week. And every single time, every single child will say that the community is top of the list. And I think that's very interesting because in the past, a lot of these children have been isolated, they've been teaching themselves, you know, they're, they're the bedroom programmers. And as we get the younger and younger children joining us, being a part of this community from some of them as young as aged five, and growing up, the actual problems that they're going to choose to solve and the issues that they are addressing in their lives, which will influence the apps that they build, will no longer be ones that are just about social inclusion or how to get to places safely and things that you know in the past have really driven the apps that the children have chosen to make where they are you know isolated from their peers and no one really is understanding what they're building and really how clever they are so the more this is becoming mainstream and this community gets bigger and bigger and these young children just grow up with this bigger completely natural thing and supported by their peers, mentors, us, centres, you know, and even their parents. What are they going to start coding in the future? And that, for me, is very exciting. One uh, misconception I think that's out there that I'd really like to lay to rest is that it, this is a difficult thing. It's not a difficult thing. Let me give you an example. In our first year back in... A young man came in 2009 who'd never had anything to do with programming, hadn't coded a thing before in his life, but really wanted to go to Google and really wanted to take part in a hack weekend, which to him sounded really cool. So he came all the way down from Manchester and turned up, and on the train on the way down, he taught himself a little bit of CSS, which is a programming language that a lot of these children um, can speak or can program in. So he taught himself a little bit of CSS, turned up to the event. Over the course of the weekend, he obviously learned a little bit more CSS, but he also got that fire in his belly to learn. By the time he came back the next year, he was what I call polycodal, so he could code in more than one language which is hugely impressive, but it also just proves that it's doable. And every year I see this happen time and time again. Children come along here with a very little bit of understanding. We say that the lowest bar is they need to be able to edit HTML. That's the very lowest thing that they can have before they come here. And then by the time they come back the following year, they've already discovered and built their own programs or their own games or their own apps and websites and they're ready to do more and to show us. So I would say it's about a year, but it is often a lot less. You know, to, to pick up the basics of programming, it's just a matter of months and you don't need that much maths either. I think the most important thing that needs to happen at the moment with encouraging kids to code is that parents need to lose the fear. And I know it's difficult, I am a parent, and I have it with my own children. What are they doing on the internet if my child is upstairs in their bedroom and they're online? I'm, are they going to be arrested for doing something bad or are they going to see something wrong? And I think that parents just need to understand what their children are doing online and if they are programming, support that. It is a good thing to do. And if you are worried about it, then find someone who is a programmer and make sure that what they're doing is a good thing. But losing that fear is the most important thing that parents can do to help support their children and their children's future career and also to empower their children online. I mean, in the same way that we don't ask our children to go and cross the street without teaching them about what happens with cars driving backwards and forwards. We need to teach children how to operate as digital citizens, how to be safe and to understand what programs they're interacting with and for them to have some power in there as well because it's not very nice to feel powerless and to be the passenger in the car that is the internet that's driving along being driven by people that you don't know who are the programmers that are building things at the moment, you know, why not be the person that learns to drive that car as well and be safe?